In this introduction to diabetic retinopathy screening, we're going to look at the broader context within which the screening of retinal scans takes place. Obviously, the first thing that happens is the visit to the opticians and the eye test. And during the visit to the opticians, a detailed scan of the retina can be conducted, the images of which can then be used to identify any medical conditions, including diabetic retinopathy. And what these scans reveal is the unique pattern of blood vessels at the back of the eye. And people have been looking at the pattern of blood vessels for a long time. So this is a textbook drawing from the 1880s of the kind of pattern which you're going to become very familiar with by looking at photographic scans. So to take an overview of the screening process, the screening episode fundamentally breaks down into two decisions, depending on whether the screen is positive or negative. If the screen is positive, this may be for three reasons. First of all, there may be diabetic retinopathy which has to be acted on. It may be that the screening isn't possible to really determine if there is something serious there or not. And it may be that the screening has identified a condition which isn't diabetic retinopathy but which requires some other form of treatment. If the screening is negative, then the patient is simply referred for annual rescreening. The process of analysing a retinal scan is basically one of inspecting the scan using computer software, which can manipulate the image, enlarge it, and so on, so that you can get a feel for the pattern of blood vessels on the retina. Basically, the process involves making distinctions between different kinds of pattern. And different kinds of pattern are then coded and entered into a computer system which records the degree of diabetic retinopathy and maculopathy in a particular scan. On examining these scans, you will identify patterns which have underlying causes. And on this course, you will learn about those underlying causes and the mechanisms which sit behind them. So for example, there are mechanisms behind a phenomenon known as vascular leakage. And there are also related mechanisms concerning the blockage of capillaries as an effect of diabetes. There are also hemorrhages and microaneurysms which can cause visible effects on the retina. And again, you will understand how to make these distinctions. Then there are telltale patterns of the development of the veins in the retina which also have underlying causes and which need to be noted. And a combination of these complex mechanisms can cause the blotchy, deep hemorrhages that you can see on the retinal scans. So these are the kinds of images that you're going to be getting a lot of exposure to as you work your way through this course. Some of them will be quite normal, and some of them will be quite clearly abnormal, although the ways in which they are abnormal might not be immediately obvious to you and we will show you how to make clear distinctions about the different things that you can see on the retinal scan. Some of the images that you see may look quite similar, and it can be quite difficult to make clear distinctions as to how they are different. As you advance through the course, we'll show you how to make these finer distinctions and explain how the ability to make these finer distinctions is dependent on the depth of your knowledge of the underlying mechanisms which can produce them. We hope you enjoy it.